The Innermost Coffin of Tutankhamun. King Tutankhamun, the most researched and best known pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt was a civilization in northern Africa that invented writing, ways to build buildings, medicine, cosmetics, the calendar, the plow for farming, musical instruments, and even toothpaste. Ancient Egypt lasted from 3150 BCE to 30 BCE. Tutankhamun's rule was from 1334 BCE until 1325 BCE, also known as the New Kingdom period. But before his rule, his father, Amihotep IV, was the pharaoh of Egypt. At first, Amihotep IV worshipped the god Amon-Re. The Egyptians had multiple beliefs and worshipped different gods. Amon was known as the king of gods. Amon was believed to be a part of the Agdawad, which is four gods referred to as frog heads and four goddesses referred to as snake heads. The Egyptians believed that before the world was formed, there was only water, darkness, and directionless chaos. They believed that there were eight deities who were the cause of the chaos. The eight deities were Nan and Nanet, the god and goddess of water, He and Heet, the god and goddess of infinity and eternity, Ket and Kaket, the god and goddess of darkness, and Amon and Amenet, god and goddess of invisibility, known as the hidden ones. Amon became associated with the ram, which is the symbol of fertility. Amon then became associated with the sun god Re. Going back to Ahimhotep, Aminhotep created a new capital and named it Akhenaten, Horizon of the Disc. Amihotep IV then changed his name to Akhenaten, he who was useful to the sun disc, and began worshipping Aten, a sun god that symbolized life and energy in Egypt. Akhenaten tried to steer Egypt to worship only one god. All of Akhenaten's belief came to an end when he dies and Tutankhamun becomes pharaoh as his monuments and statues were destroyed. Mummification was one of the most popular beliefs in ancient Egypt and began in Egypt as early as 3500 BCE, which is the preservation of a corpse. The Egyptians believed that the body had to be preserved in order for them to have eternal life and a successful chance in the afterlife. Tutankhamun's tomb consisted of a sarcophagus which was made out of quartz and the lid was made out of red granite. Inside of that was the innermost coffin which was wrapped in linen and made out of wood and stone. The coffin showed an image of Tutankhamun. Inside of that was the second coffin made out of wood. Small pieces of colored glass were attached to the coffin. Inside of that was the innermost coffin made out of pure gold and laid with glass and semi-precious stones. And lastly, inside of that, the mummy of Tutankhamun with the head covered by a mask of gold, lapis, lazuli, glass, and semi-precious stones. Going back to the innermost coffin, it was made out of solid gold with enamel and semi-precious stones. Six feet tall, 243 pounds. There are paintings of both Tutankhamun along with other symbols and jewelry painted on the lid of the coffin. Also, there was lapis, quartz, carnelian, feldspar, and turquoise glass all over the coffin. Eye pupils are made out of obsidian, and eyebrows and cosmetics lines are made out of lapis colored glass. The beard was separate and attached to the chin. The neck area had two necklaces of beads painted on it. Tutankhamun's arms are crossed across his chest. The crook and flail are in his left and right hands. Under the hands are the goddesses Nekbet, a vulture, and Wajet, cobra, spreading their wings around the upper part of the body. There was inscriptions and words painted down to his feet. The lid and the base of the coffin are painted with other figures. The goddesses Isis and Nathias cover the lower right and left sides, and two lines of text are on the front of the coffin lid that stretch down to his feet. On the bottom of his feet is Isis kneeling down upon the hieroglyph for God. Contour lines are represented in this art piece because there are numerous lines that wrap around this art piece and define shape and features of the young pharaoh. There is a cool color scheme because there are a lot of blues represented in this art piece. 
The texture is tactile because it is an actual three-dimensional shape. The different component of this art piece work together to create forms such as the different paintings and pieces connected and attached to the art piece. There is both mainly positive space on this art piece because there is little to no emptiness on this art piece. It may look like it is empty from afar, but if you zoom in on the art piece, there are inscriptions occupying space. There is no known artist of Tutankhamun's coffin. Tutankhamun was the pharaoh after his father, Akhenaten, died. Tutankhamun abandoned his father's monotheistic beliefs and adopted polytheism again. As a pharaoh, Tutankhamun reversed the changes made to Egypt and steered it back to their traditional beliefs. Tutankhamun was at first named Tutankhaten, gracious of life is Aten, and changed it to Tutankhamun, gracious life of Amen. Tutankhamun was only 19 when he died and his tomb was sealed for more than 32,000 years. The tomb had various treasures and artifacts that were believed to go with him to the afterlife. The title of this art piece is The Innermost Coffin of Tutankhamun. The title is informative because it states exactly which coffin it is focusing on since there were four coffins that Tutankhamun was buried inside of. The art piece is made out of solid gold along with stones. This art piece was made in 1325 BCE. This art piece was made after the death of Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun was only the age of 19 when he died and ruled for about nine years. This art piece was discovered in Tutankhamun's tomb by Howard Carter in 1922. This art piece was created and found in Thebes, Egypt. The innermost coffin of Tutankhamun was created because Egyptians believed that a preserved body on earth meant that the soul would have eternal life. It was believed that the soul had nine separate parts. The kat was the physical body. The ka was the one's double form. The ba was a human-headed bird, which would speed between earth and the heavens. Shayet was the shadow self. Ak was the immortal transformed self. Shahu and Shkepin were the ap. Ab was the heart, the source of good and evil. Ren was one's secret name. The physical body needed to exist in order for the double form and Ba to recognize itself, and so the body had to be as preserved as possible. The tomb is then sealed and spells and prayers are recited. The spells known as the pyramid texts were recited for pharaohs. There is iconography all over this art piece relating to ancient Egypt, their beliefs and their religion. If we view the lid of the coffin, we see a drawing of Tutankhamun with his arms crossed holding what is called a flail and crook. The flail and crook represented as the emblems of Osiris, the lord of the underworld. Also, the flail and crook were the symbols of power and were commonly paired with rulers. If we move to the bottom of the coffin, we can see that there is Isis kneeling upon the hieroglyph for God at the bottom of his feet. Isis was the old oldest deity in Egypt and she may also be the most important. Other gods were worshipped widely. However, Isis was worshipped by almost all Egyptians. She was referred to as the great protector. She was prayed to for guidance and for other peace in the world. This is my art piece. It is a self-portrait of me with the eye of Horus on my forehead. The Eye of Horus is an Egyptian symbol of protection, royal power, and good health. The Eye of Horus is also associated with the phrases know all, see all, and the all-seeing eye. Horus was believed to be the god of the sky. He is often depicted as a man with the head of a falcon. Horus represented the heaven. His right questions. What was the difference between Tutankhamun's rule and Akhenaten's rule? What is the flail and crook?